does this here fit into this estate trunk and how good is the all new BMW 5 Series Touring that will also come as the electric i5 but also with all the different powertrains. We're going to find out if this probably one of the most German cars in the BMW lineup also performs in this very generation. It's Thomas Nautikfuhr in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go. You've seen it. We are starting at the rear because you can already see the design of this new estate generation. It is almost, I would say, if you come around there a little bit, I would say almost shooting brake alike. Or what do you think? Tell me in the comments. These tail lamps here, nice three-dimensional design, go around. And then this is definitely new. So before, I would say the 5 Series Touring looked more estate-alike. Estate, we say, in UK. Wagon in the US. And of course, in Germany, Kombi. The famous German Kombi. Yeah, the Germans love their Kombis. And that's why the 5 Series here as the Touring is also a very crucial model, especially for the German market right here. The length with 5 meters and 6 is actually the same, just like the 5 Series sedan in new generation. And here we also have 21 inch wheels from that M Sport design. Yeah, I really love that design. It looks so complex, doesn't it? By the way, standard wheels will be 18 inch for the new 5 Series. Then 19 inch is standard for i5 and the plug-in hybrid models. And then optional 20 inch, 21 inch. These ones in here, the biggest one with 21. M Sport design means here the M badge at the side and also black around the frame. Interesting is that you have a lot of suspension choices. You start with a standard suspension, then you can go for a fixed M suspension, just a stiffer one. Then you get the Adaptive Suspension Professional, that is an adaptive suspension, plus the rear axis steering, where the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels. And you can get the Adaptive M Suspension Professional, that one then reserved for the top models, for example, the M Performance model, that also then includes an anti-tilt control. And last fact about the suspension, yeah, you see this is kind of complicated BMW. Here, the i5 and also the plug-in hybrid models, they get air suspension at the rear axle as standard. And now we have it here in the front. That looks really spectacular. Let me tell you why. First of all, in the M Sport Pack, you have these black contrasts in the lower part. This vehicle, however, is equipped with the M Sport Package Pro. And that one also adds the black frame around the double kidney and also then here these black fins on the inside. Otherwise, even with a normal M Sport Pack, the frame would be bright and also bright fins. What I personally prefer, so I think when it's too dark, too sinister, I think it's a little bit too much. So I prefer more the base version look of the new 5 Series, no matter if sedan or touring. Tell me in the comments if you agree or not, if you're team dark or team bright. <laughs> so, and then here, the sensor field is in the middle part, really large, front camera. This and the i logo if you have the electric version, but other than that, it's more if you pick the M Sport Pack, M Sport Pro, or the base version, how it looks in the front. And you've already seen it here. We can very well see that in the studio here because we don't have a large light from this direction at the moment. The so-called iconic glow that's also then included here in this very trim. Otherwise, you can also get it individually optional. And then this cool illumination around the double kidney. Yeah, that always looks pretty impressive, isn't it? It's not a necessary feature, but yeah. What is necessary with a high-end premium vehicle? That's always, of course, up to discussion. So I've just read these questions popping up. Thomas, what is actually this very color called? It's called Cape York Green. So it's not a light green, but it's also a super dark green, something in between. Definitely a very unique color, isn't it? Of course, I would always order it in Thomas Blue, you know. <laughs> then, oh. Uh, obviously, it does not frunk, so this is a huge not-engine cover. Shall we call it the, the official not-engine cover? <laughs> it's also interesting, right? I have to think about this, yeah. But obviously, large vehicle, but no frunk. I think they should have offered some. What do you think? Headlamp detail, LED is standard, optional, adaptive matrix LED. It's also the one you can see here, and usually you would have that with a blue accentuation right here to see them. Then again, this is M Sportback Pro, where the blue accentuation is then blacked out again. 
for this extended <laughs> line here, some that it gets really complicated. Turning indicators in the front, really spectacular. Look at that. Here they replace the daytime running light and they also have this pulsing effect, a little bit like a heartbeat. Turning indicators in the rear, pretty cool, very visible. So this in the hazard light mode at the moment and the M Sport Pack here at this black contrast in the lower part, really diffuser style. And indeed, no matter if you go for the electric version or the combustion engines, the styling on the exterior is always more or less the same. That's also the BMW strategy that an electric vehicle doesn't scream out, hey, I am electric. It's just the same design across the lineup here. The blue frame around the logo, this is when you have a plug-in hybrid or an electric version, for example. So now, um, you know, I have this standard measurement section here at Autogefühl. And this one looked so funny, I had to use it somehow. Um, yeah, but how do I do this now? Maybe like, um, maybe the measures first and then the fun stuff, right? So electric hatch is standard equipment and... Listen to that. Do you hear that actually? Yeah, the point is you hear nothing. This electric motor to open the rear hatch is so silent and they have indeed also worked on that. So that's pretty cool because sometimes we have vehicles like SUVs or estates where you open the electric hatch and like, like it's like, oh, I have I activated some Terminator or something? But here, super silent, I love that. And at the same time also, the hatch closing sound, that's also really remarkable. Let's listen to that. Very satisfying. Maybe I should do a separate reel where it like closes 10 times or something. Shall we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that. Car and Fulvia stuff. Leah is now thinking like, yeah, now he's gone completely nuts. Yeah. Sorry for that. <laughs> so, and now, interesting thing is here, this is the top cover. And usually I have left it like this. But in the moment you open the electric hatch, it gives you a mechanical release and then it pops back like this. So that is then the situation you find yourself is not completely electric. Um, they thought here to open, you know, like, like in an easier mechanism and then most of the things you can access like this. Of course, you can also push it back further like this and it slides back quite, you know, smooth, I would say. First of all, the measurements now. So the length of the normal part is one meters and six. And the width here, so this is a meter of 40 inches, but you can see it's way more even between the wheel arches. That is impressive. That's like 115 in meters. And that is like 45 inches. So that's a very good width result. And also the height, very important here, especially for dog owners, 70 centimeters or 27 inches. Then this release from the trunk is also standard. Wow, that's amazing. That's, look at that, how smooth that is. See that? Because sometimes we have um, release mechanisms where, you know, it doesn't really, like it stops like here and then you have to push. And sometimes we have these mechanisms that are, um, for example, at Mercedes, they always fold like really quickly. There's so much force um, behind it that then when you want to fold it up again, you have to be really strong and it goes like bang. But here, you know, it releases and then in the last moment, like, that's beautiful. So I um, really like that. However, what I don't like that much, and we have to watch it if we, if we will stay that way. These are one of the very first vehicles here built. So the top part here, it is structured, but to me a little bit cheap. So, you know, I would give BMW feedback that they should use some more premium material. But as I said, they have these prototype vehicles here when we see them the very first time. We will follow that and keep you updated when we do our next driving part review, when they are, you know, like cars that are built a little bit later. These ones will not sell to the customers. So then we'll keep you up if that stays that way. But Maybe we just do it one more time here that you can really follow that process. Um, Leah, maybe you, you come around here, please. So because when I release it here, and then you can watch it actually how smooth it falls down. So watch out. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? So um, yeah, maybe I'm uh, too much of a car nerd to find, to find these things uh, most amazing, but yeah. 
that's just how who I am. <laughs> then the total length, of course, is missing. You see, this is a real touring review, it is for sure. Here, the length to the driver's seat is yeah, like 185 meters, 73 inches, overall very good measurements. Now, especially for the i5, where couldn't you put the charging cable? Yeah, that's a problem, no frunk, and also not too much space below here. But this is also very interesting. At least one thing that is very well working is, so the release for the top cover here is easier. Just push here, push there, and then you can easily get that out. And also you can easily store that underneath. Look at that, that's a super clean solution. Then you have this, you know, here to pull it back. There we go, Maximus setup. So I think, I mean, this is the most important thing about this vehicle and also how the hatch is uh, attached right there. And this is, this is like, you know, beautifully done. And remember, this is also one of the very rare fully electric estates, wagons or combis on the market. And for that, I think it's the best and most versatile electric estate we have seen so far. Of course, the same for the combustion and inversion, because that's also what they say. In every single powertrain version, it is the very same luggage capacity, 500 liters in the base setup, up to 1,700 liters, as you see it right here, right now. And of course, the most important thing about this review, not that it's over yet, there's more to come, very interesting things from the interior, but here, yeah, this one here, the floaty, <laughs> goes in there, fits very well, so um, yeah. There we go with the floaty transport. Well, and Leah is relaxing now from the hard camera work. So thank you so much to her as well. Oh, and you can also uh, watch some movies on the, on the iPad then. Like, yeah, there we go. Next feature is one of the iPad holders. And I think it's also an easy solution just to put your own iPad there, right? <laughs> I, are you enjoying? Yeah. <laughs> See you later. What about towing? There is a button right here in the trunk. And look at that if something happens. And oh, there we go. Fully electric, that's cool, very convenient indeed. And the towing capacity here for the base electric version, rear wheel drive only, is 1.5 tons. However, if you go for an all wheel drive electric version or for a combustion engine version, then it's two tons. And just the press of the button, let's see if it automatically yeah, goes back flawless. This is the key fob, M colors here. If you have an M sport pack, it's pretty light actually, the key. And then the door, you see here the door handle, you can close it like this, you maybe also heard that. Open it when you touch it underneath. And then they fold up like this, so they are integrated, flush. At the same time, they do give you a haptic feedback, and I think that's a good solution. So then, closing sound. Oh, it's, it's interesting. So it's solid, but it also has this, I would say, like second sound. that almost sounds G-class alike, you know what I mean? Interesting, man. Pretty cool indeed. Then inside of the doors, so top part is soft touch, also here for your elbows. Then the window levers, I would say they are somewhat basic. Ambient lighting integration looks cool. And then is one of the things I criticize most in this price segment. Here, look at that. There is no cover, no felt cover at the inside here. And why would it be a problem, you might ask yourself. Here, just when I put the key in there and then I drive, it would like this and this doesn't happen when you have a felt inside covering so if BMW and they, well they are watching this so I can give that to you as the feedback also from a customer perspective because I really know that I speak for all of the customers who see that a BMW customer especially one five series and above wants to have felt at the inside here that's just fact they need to fix that as soon as possible. Then let's look at the interior here. This is the M Sport interior. It means you have the M Sport steering wheel here. Flat bottom, however, is also in the standard steering wheel. The standard steering wheel is actually animal free. The M Sport is not. Then rear buttons here still at the steering wheel. So it's like a like mix, I would say. And also standard stall columns, columns, I like that. This one also has carbon fiber interior soft touch at the dashboard here and then these seats here are first of all the sport seats so they are a little more narrow i would say especially here in this area but you can also get comfort seats and i have been test driving both the sport seat and the comfort seat the comfort seat is as the name says indeed way more comfortable but you know i wouldn't have expected such a large difference but i can just urge you when you order a new 5 series a take the comfort seats 
and B, take the standard so-called Veganza interior, this is the animal free material, it is also in comparison here, this one is the animal skin spec. It looks the same actually, it, uh, you know, in the surface also kind of feels the same, but the Veganza material is a little bit softer, it adapts more to the body. So the comfort seat with the Veganza would be the most comfortable choice actually. If you want to know background about the materials and also about sustainability at BMW, we did an extensive sustainability feature over an hour long with all the facts and details that answers actually every single question you can possibly have. Very, you know, worth to take that chance to get into this topic for that. Then interesting, so seat is lowest position and me with 189, six for two. Still have some headroom left. This one is the version with the panoramic roof. However, what we can see is this one here is a fixed glass roof. I was wondering because I was pushing it forward. And yeah, of course it comes from the rear there. In this case then, yeah, with the seven series, it's the other way around. Look at that. So this is then the manual shade we have here and I can open it like this again. There we go. Yeah, this electric motor is way louder here. Um, yeah, that's maybe um, something that some would like to have differently. New vehicles usually have fixed glass roofs and not the ones you can actually open. I'm also someone who loves to open panoramic roofs. Then my guy at the next local workshop says, either go for a convertible or get, get the fixed roof. I've seen so many, you know, like flaws with the small panoramic roofs you can open, the large ones you can open with squeaking and then leaking and so on. So um, yeah, that's what the guy at the workshop says. So then in this case, a fixed glass, glass roof is better. What do you think about that? Tell me in the comments. Cockpit begins with music. Hmm, the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. Hmm, nice. It's a really good sound. Love that. Electric steering wheel control in and out, up and down. 12.3 inch digital instruments, 14.9 inch infotainment, and they form this one unit, a little bit in a curved way. So what I don't like here is the control of the climate unit in the lower part, which is not physical at the moment, ignition is off, but the Apple CarPlay integration, you've seen it here, that is pretty cool, very well visible. The menu here itself of the BMW OS is, I think, always a little bit overblown, overloaded too many apps, I feel, I think they should simplify it more. And also here, this light bar, it looks pretty cool, especially when you turn on here the hazard lights. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So why not? But I think in the 7 Series, you have it here, it goes through left and right. Here, they have this split. And I wonder why they went for that design choice. Also, for example, here, when you change the driving modes, oh, maybe you heard it also, that the bolsters of the seats they were adjusting here also how the light builds up that looks pretty amazing but again i think it should be here running through just design wise soft touch here then again the carbon fiber inside you can get different styling elements for this one in the front inductive charging pad with cooling holes really important because especially in the 5 series it just got so hot without that function before and then you have here the adaptive cup holders there we go, with two USB-C chargers. And you can still control the infotainment system here from below. I love that also from the sound. DJ. <laughs> and then also a real volume drug. It's just flickering on camera here at the moment, by the way, not for your real eye. This is here, a shifting lever. So really slim and integrated, but it doesn't give you like a sporty feedback or something. And the middle console here with this split opening, some more space underneath. Interesting, and by the way, also here the door handle from the inside opens to the bottom part. I think it's a good idea, and you can use two fingers here, especially. It's actually ergonomically quite good to do it in that way. I know exactly what you're thinking. So, have you seen here the battery status and the range meter, or the predicted range left? In this case, here is actually quite accurate, but I just want to comment on that. Very often when there are cars statically in the studio, here on our Autocofuel channel, but also at other car reviewers, it is not a precise figure. Why is that? Usually the predicted range or the estimated range left is calculated. You know, how much consumption did you have, energy consumption on the past, and then different algorithms are applied on the last 10, 100, 1000 kilometers, whatever. It's different from brand to brand, car to car. 
And so maybe this studio car has been just like moved around statically, the AC was running and everything, and it wasn't really running at an efficient speed or something like that. And probably the consumption figure there is like totally off the scale. And then the predicted range is maybe sometimes like 50 kilometers left, although there's like 60% battery or something. We had that recently in the Polestar 4 in the studio, where the episode with AJ. And there they had like this really low figure, but doesn't have anything to do with the car. It's about this static studio setting. So when you see these figures in a static studio vehicle, do not believe them unless they can be verified. Here in this case, I can tell you it's quite correct. It fits to the vehicle because I've driven the vehicle before. But if you haven't driven the vehicle before or know like the, the figures and so on, you cannot really make like real assumptions for that. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that fact because uh, there were a lot of comments like, oh my God, this car doesn't have any real range, you know, about the Polestar 4. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but Leah made me wear these socks here. So um, maybe especially family fathers know, um, yeah, women tend to push men sometimes into things. They are not really, let's say, you know, they wouldn't get the idea themselves. But actually, these socks are quite comfortable. And, you know, I love cats, so I was also okay with that then at the end of the day. Thank you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so at these new 199 inches of length of the new 5 Series, for all versions, means it's 10 centimeters or 10 centimeters or 4 inches longer than the predecessor. Wheelbase is just slightly increased. How does it translate into the rear leg room and also What's the door closing sound like in the rear? Hmm, also very good, but not this, um, let's say like this G-Class effect side. Do, do you hear the difference? Heard that? This one here is a little bit more low frequency in the door closing sound, but both really good. Then insert of the doors on the top part, soft touch, that's well done. However, in the lower part, once again, the hard pack stuff also on the inside, I mean, the rear may be excusable, but not in the front, definitely. Then you can see here the rear seating area with the iPad holder, and they have the USB-C charging directly where you can plug it in, for example. There's this middle console also with the climate unit, and then we have this, this recess here in the back part, and it does work here for tall adults, you can see very well. I mean, it's a long vehicle, so it should definitely. And um, there are other vehicles that have better usage of space. But even here, when I'm sitting as a tall driver in the front seat, it works very well, no problem. And the headroom is, of course, always a good thing for the estate because it just continues a little bit longer. And here, there's still some headroom left above my head, no problem. It's also fairly comfortable in the rear. Just here, this is a typical BMW thing. It has been. I think even in the E30 of my grandma or grandfather has been like this, this area here. We know before your elbow is always really large, so you don't have too much space for your elbow. So and then middle seating, does that work? Yeah, it also works space-wise. Of course, the seating material is softer on the outside parts each. That counts for all the different seat setups. Uh, but yeah, for shorter trips, you can also live with the inside part. Then this middle part, you can fold down. Adaptive cup holders here as well. So that's a nice build quality. And the ski head, you cannot pull out here, but from behind here in the top part, then you can also use this ski hatch right there. This middle console here for the climate unit is actually quite fancy, looks cool. I'm more a fan of real physical buttons, you know, maybe when you follow our channel, but this one looks at least cool. Yeah, it is touch control. Some might like it. I recently talked to my seven-year-old niece and asked her when she was uh, discovering all the buttons and stuff in my vehicle, actually, which I maybe do have a very personal review on very soon. And I showed her all the buttons and then I asked her, like, do you prefer it when you have real buttons or when you have everything in the screen, like in a Tesla of your dad, like, you know, my brother. And then she said, like, nah, she prefers it in the screen. I was like... No, 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 no. Yeah, that's my personal suffering story. But yeah, she's beautiful and super nice. But we have to talk about this button versus screen stuff. I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, it looks cool. But uh, to control, you get along, definitely. This is the take about the engine facts and figures. And that's why behind me, I have prepared a very serious background that you should just concentrate on me telling you all the numbers and so on. So uh, there's the BMW i5, the electric version, 81 kilowatt hours net, 
the battery capacity. We've already been test driving the i5 sedan and they will be more or less the same because the CD values don't differ that much as well. So it's 0.24 in the CD value for the base versions, 0.25 if you have here the M Sport Package Pro or the M Performance version. The M Sport Package indeed does cost you wind efficiency. So a base 5 series, that's the i5, will be better as for the aerodynamics. That's very interesting to hear. So the rearward range will be something between 400 and 500 kilometers, between 250 and 300 miles, depending on temperature, speed, and so on and so on. Then there will be plug-in hybrids, four or six in the petrol S base. Very interesting, definitely for the European market especially. And you have the petrol engines, 2 liter 4 cylinders or 3 liter 6 cylinders, and the diesel as well, 2 liter 4 cylinder or 3 liter 6 cylinder diesel. The i5 M60 is the performance version, because then you have all wheel drive for the electric version. You get also a normal all wheel drive electric version, and this one here, the e drive 40, is the rear wheel drive electric version. Also for the combustion engines, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, always then also rear wheel bias if you have an all-wheel drive version. And as for the M5, we do expect a 4.4 liter V8 hybrid. If that's true or not, we'll see at a later stage. And also rumors that it might even come here for the estate, but we'll keep you updated with that. If you want to know more in depth about all the engine specs, video description or a separate comment, we have all the specs in an extensive list. Pricing. We already have a German pricing, for example, that is more or less representative. 62,000 euros as an entry level 520D, so the four cylinder diesel, and then up to 100,000 euros for an i5 M60 electric version in the M Performance model. Yeah, and of course, maybe some more extras. It can even get more expensive. So, of course, not at all a cheap vehicle, but hey, hasn't been that uh, that way before. Maybe there will also be some interesting leasing deals. And which version would I actually go for? If you go electric or not, this is more about the charging infrastructure. If that, who's calling me now? Michelle, he's maybe, you know, yeah, saying he, he can't do the camera work today. Sorry about that, Michelle, I'll call you later. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, usually my phone would not ring unless it's Leah or Michelle, because usually they mean, you know, something very important. So, back to the car. <laughs> Which one would I go for? I mean, the electric one is quite attractive, and it's also very efficient, actually. Still, the battery is not too large. So, you have to think about if that makes sense for you with that still somewhat limited range. Um, yeah, that's more like a like, philosophical question always. In Europe, I think I would go for the plug-in hybrid version because in Europe you cannot get the big pure petrol engines. So like the famous 3-liter 6-liter petrol engine, that's the one I would go for in the US for sure. But it's not available in Europe. You can only get it inside the plug-in hybrid version, for example, 2-liter 4 or 3-liter 6-liter plug-in hybrid. Then I would go for the big plug-in hybrid in Europe and then the pure petrol engine in the US probably would be my choice powertrain-wise. Exterior, I think it looks cool in white, definitely. We've seen it before, or of course, a nice blue color. Interior, the comfort seats with the Veganza material and also um, more or less the base pack. And I would not go for the M Sport pack. I would, for exterior and interior, rather pick a more subtle base version look of the 5 Series. And the last question is sedan or estate. Visually, I always prefer the sedan, actually, I have to say, but from the practicability, the estate, of course, is always better. And uh, I've just asked Leah about her opinion of, like, from, from a woman's perspective, and she said she would take it in that form, definitely, and prefer this one here over the sedan one. What about you? Tell me your comments, and what do you think about that the 5 Series Touring is now actually, I would say, indeed, a shooting break. Tune in to our sedan driving review, and of course also to the competitor, the Mercedes E-Class.